Hi, today we're going to have a look at the Dark Shadow Launcher. Uh, the design is based on the same uh, principle as we did for the G2 Launcher, but it's been upgraded to handle about three times the pressure. The lever ratio for the primary lever is about 40 to 1, um, so that at 600 psi up here, we're getting about 2 kilos pushing down at this end. Uh, we've also added a stronger stainless steel pin and a brass contact plate that stops the uh, lever arm from deforming un under those pressures. The nozzle seat itself is just made, machined out of a piece of brass and it works in combination with the lever arm to pinch the nozzle uh, to keep it in place. So push the nozzle on and you'll see it actually squeezes the inside and the outside to keep it in place when it's locked. The lever arm's pivot points also offset from where it grips it so that once it's released the lever arm doesn't have to swing far to clear the nozzle as it comes out and as the nozzle's pushing out it also pushes the lever out of the way. The nozzle itself is machined from aluminium bar to tight tolerances to match the nozzle seat. The base of the nozzle is also thicker to take the landing impact as the rocket comes down tail first. The air comes in here by a standard scuba hose and goes up the nozzle seat. For the high pressures we screw in the hose rather than using a quick hose connector. The 15mm launch tube is removable and we can just screw it onto the top like this. Uh, that allows for easier transportation and testing smaller pressure chambers. The secondary lever is spring loaded so that once you lock it in, if someone bumps the launcher it doesn't come down. The lever is pulled back by an RC servo with about a 10 kilogram centimeter torque rating and it's controlled by one of our servo timer twos that lives inside the control box. Inside the control box we just have a 9 volt battery made out of 6 AA batteries to give us enough current and the time is over here. We've got our switch and the remote tr trigger plugs in here. Uh, so we can turn it on, plug in our trigger then once we see that it's armed, we can see it's armed, should just be able to arm it and then release the rocket. That's it. Then you just turn it off. If you want to reset the servo, turn it back on and it goes back to the default position. The launcher also has a mechanical backup. So if you turn up to the launch site and you forgot your remote control or there's a problem with the battery or the servo, you can still go and hook a piece of rope over the secondary lever and pull that to release the rocket. The entire release mechanism again fits into our standard quick launcher and the release head can slide away from the rail to fit different diameter rockets. We use a couple of removable guide rail buttons that allow us to handle the rocket with the guide rail and release mechanism without putting too many lateral stresses on the nozzle. After you fill the rocket with water and slide it onto the launch tube and bring it all the way down to the nozzle sea, you just slide it over the o-ring then lock it into place with the primary lever. Once upright and ready for launch, we just remove the rail buttons and the launch tube keeps the rocket upright. Before using the launcher on the rocket for the first time, we performed a couple of tests of the launcher. We made a plugged aluminium slug in the shape of the nozzle so that it would fit onto the launcher. Above it we mounted a PVC pipe filled with rags and newspapers to absorb the shock and catch the slug. We fired it a couple of times, once at 600 psi and then again at 650. The launcher released the slug without any issues. Since those tests, the launcher has now been used at 700 psi during actual launch. And here is the launcher in the field launching Dark Shadow.
Thanks for watching and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. See you next time.